Good morning. Welcome to St. John United Methodist Church. My name is Beth Dixon. I'm one of the staff members here, and we welcome you on this first Sunday of Lent. I want to give a special thanks this morning as we, everybody's getting settled in worship. First, a welcome to our online visitors and our visitors here in the sanctuary. Um, I want to thank everyone who stepped in this week while I was at home in quarantine to make sure that we had a wonderful Shrove Tuesday pancake dinner and talent show. I heard great things. I got lots of good pictures, so if you have pictures, send them to me. And uh, we had a wonderful Ash Wednesday potluck and service. So thank you all for being a part of that and for all the volunteers who made those two special evenings happen. Thank you very much. Upcoming this week, the United Women of Faith will be meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here in the Fellowship Hall. If you are a visitor or new to St. John and would like to join, you don't have to sign up. They would love to have you come for their time of study and fellowship. They will be having their women's retreat coming up um, the end of April at Lake Oconee. I believe there's a couple more spots left, so if you'd like to go with them, please see Jeannie Lee. The, um, reserve your spot by March 1st, and there's a $100 deposit. They're going to be going to Lake Oconee this year, so not too far away, but it'll be a nice weekend of relaxation and fellowship and study together. Our Wednesday night suppers kick back off next week with our regular time slot at 615. Sweet Azalea does our catering, and they always have a nice meal for us. The cost is $10. If you have not signed up, please make sure you fill out the online form or fill out a form and well, no, we don't have paper forms just an online form or email the office by tomorrow so we can let the caterer know when I looked at the list this week I saw a lot of people who are regulars haven't signed up they signed up for Ash Wednesday but not a standing reservation so please make sure we know you're coming I think that's all the announcements I have this morning so thank you all for being here and we will now begin our worship of Almighty God
Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness? Let us pray. God of our salvation, your bow is in the clouds, proclaims your covenant with every living creature. Teach us your paths and lead us in your what truth, that by your Holy Spirit we may remember our baptismal vows and be keepers of your trust in earth and inhabitants. Amen. Amen. scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. sons with him. As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join me, if you will, and in reading our psalm this morning, it's found on your hymnal, page 756. soul. O oh my God, you are 
trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Let none that wait for you to be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are God of my salvation. For you are made all day mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore the Lord instructs sinners in the way and teaches them their way. A reading from 1 Peter. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. No need to sit down. We're going to move around today. Y'all get to get in behind me, and we're going to do, we're following the leader. Okay, do we know how to play that? Okay, I'm going to go this way, and y'all follow me and do what I do. Wave to the camera. <laughs> Tell everybody good morning. good morning. Say, we're glad to be here. We're, to be here. we're church children. children. And we're on a path. Down. We 
are in a season. What is this season called at church? Church has seasons. This is called the Lenten season, right? And how many days is it? 40 days. We're on a special path for 40 days, okay? And during those 40 days, we're trying to figure out a new direction, a different path. The church has many ways. Today our psalm says, teach me your path, O God. And one of the ways that we can learn about God's path is by coming to church. One of the ways we can learn about God's path is reading the Bible and learning the Bible stories. One of the ways we can learn God's path is by looking at the person of Jesus. And today, we learned in our Sunday school, right, that Jesus said, now is the time. Let's make some change in our life. And you're boys and girls, so you don't have a lot to change. You just need to grow, but you need to come to church every week during Lent so that we can stay on the path, okay? Thank you for being here this morning. Let's bow our heads and repeat after me our prayer. God, teach me your path, that through these 40 days of Lent, I may really try to follow you. Amen. As you are able, please stand for a reading from the Gospel. A reading from Mark. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited upon him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may be seated. I was hiking down a trail with a group of third through fifth graders when the leader of the hike that day, a girl with long, beautiful blonde hair, tripped. And she landed on her side and began to roll. And she began to pick up some speed. And she kept rolling. And Jeremy, who was the co-counselor I was working with, did his best to try and run and to catch her. For the kids were leading us on the hike, so the counselors were in the back. And I just still can close my eyes and see her hair just going through the woods and what felt like eternity she st before she stopped. And when she stopped, she sat up and just jumped to her feet and said, I'm okay. And everyone took a deep breath. And she barely had a scratch on her. In the panic, I began to wonder how was I going to explain this to her sweet parents had just dropped her off a few days earlier for camp. 
But the good news was, not even a scratch. And you know what? She just hopped up as if nothing had ever occurred and just went back to leading the hike. In late December, I had a call from a local TV reporter. She wanted to interview me for about the future of the United Methodist Church. I thought, well, that's quite a question. So I pointed her to websites where she could find accurate news information. And I told her the good news is that St. John is great. And not that day, that was not exactly what she was fishing for. So our call ended pretty quickly. But fast forward through time to this past week. All of a sudden, the news was interested in the United Methodist Church again, but found themselves on the Augusta Commons, where Ash Wednesday was going on from 8 till 3. And everyone covered it. Even the radio, for a man driving from Charleston to Atlanta on the way to visit a friend, heard on the radio. Who listens to the radio still? I didn't know. And stop along the way just to receive ashes. That morning as Nick and I were setting up the tent and table, a woman stopped immediately and said, what time do you officially begin? Later she came back from her office. People who work downtown have now attended Ash Wednesday on the Commons for at least three years in a row. This year, a woman even making her son drive down to meet us. It's an interesting news story. For Lent begins with the reminder that from dust we are created and to the dust will we return. And that we are to hear the good news of the gospel. Not the most exciting of news stories, but yet at the center of the Christian faith. It's this reminder that our time here on this side of the kingdom is short. And our time next on the other side of the kingdom is for eternity. For that is part of the good news of the gospel. The good news that Jesus, yes, went into the wilderness where he was with the wild beast, apart and with God's creation, that the angels were there for him, and that, you know what? He didn't have to stay there. For his time in the wilderness had a beginning and an end. He didn't have to linger any longer than what was needed. For his wilderness journey, full of temptation and full of what we wonder really what was going on there that time in the desert region right after his baptism in the Jordan River. But it had a beginning and it had an end. In management sometimes, you'll have people who will style their um, feedback to you as what we call the sandwich method, right? Where they say something nice and then they tell you something that's going wrong and then they tell you something nice again. What that creates is whenever you talk with someone, then they're, you're just prepared for them to tell you something nice, tell you something not so nice, and then end it with something nice. So you never have just good news as good news, and you never have bad news as just bad news. It just begins to kind of mix together. The good news 
and the bad news kind of just become like a soup. And it becomes hard to tell them apart. But the Gospel of Mark wants us to hear the good news. The Gospel of Mark is a gospel that is moving quickly because good news is important. We live in an age and a time where even good news we might be a little surprised about. Not really trusting what is good. It's an interesting time to be in. Because sometimes when we really aren't too sure about good news, it might mean that we are really more interested in the bad news. And that's what gets our attention first. The good news is that Jesus went into the wilderness. He went into a place that none of us want to go, but yet a place where, because we are human in an imperfect world, we find ourselves moving in and out of. And the good news is that Jesus was there for only 40 days with the beast, that the angels came and put him back together, and he was able to get back to the mission of sharing the news that the kingdom of God has come near. Repent. The worst doesn't win. The wilderness doesn't last forever. The tumbling down the side of the mountain at record speed can end with just jumping right back up and saying, I'm okay. And that when we find ourselves in this temptation of life to just give up on the good, to push aside love, to dwell in the heartache, to find ourselves pushing away anything good. We don't have to stay in that exact place for our wilderness journey in some way in some time in God's way in God's time doesn't last forever so don't let the temptation of giving up on life overwhelm living life Jesus pushes us in the Gospel of Mark to just get back to the basics. For he hears the news of John the Baptist and he goes back into a basic message. This is the season of the basics of our faith. Practicing prayer, fasting, the reading of scriptures, private and corporate worship. The basics of discipleship begin and end in the love of Christ. In this quiet season, in a season of preparing for Easter, find what basic part of discipleship you are missing, where you need a little more strength. Maybe it's okay if it's the part that brings you the most joy. Find your place in reading the scriptures, praying, fasting, attending church for the basics of discipleship. Get us to a place where our faith, we pray, can see the good news, can remember that the time in the wilderness does come to an end, and can show us as Christians, that the love of Christ is all around us each day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
As you're able, please stand as we recite the uh, affirmation of our, of our faith, found on page 881 of your hymn book. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified again and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and ascended to the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. of Lent, we will have uh, different prayers following the sermon between now and Easter. This morning we have a prayer of confession. In this season of Lent, we earnestly repent of our sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. O oh God, we have list of things to do for all the areas of our lives. Our lives are so time-bound and duty-bound that we feel imprisoned in them. Now we are challenged by Christ to take a journey of discipleship. We don't get ready for this journey. We need more time, and we complain and cry about how much we have to do. Forgive us, Lord, for we have a, so many duties in the path of your serving you. Reset our priorities that we may be ready to commit our lives in your service. Lord, help us to be ready when you call us. Help us to courageously answer the summons you bring. Loving, created God, you are in covenant with your people. You have pledged to be our God and asked us to be your people trusting in you in all our ways. But we find many excuses to prevent us from really trusting you. We erect barriers before our faith journey even begins. Our time, obligations, energy, all become part of the bricks and mortar which fasten this barrier. We can give lip service to the journey. We can daydream about what it would be like to truly place our hands in yours and follow you. But when it comes to actually making the journey, our time constraints and weak commitments loom largely before us. Help us to tear down this barrier. Make us ready for the journey by replacing the fear of our hearts with a sense of joy and challenge of self-discovery and discipleship. Remind us that in service to you, helping others, we also find ourselves made fully whole as we have spoken the names of our friends, family members, and other situations in which healing and comfort are needed. Let us remember that we too stand in the need of prayer and healing. Make us ready to receive your good news and then to be witnesses to your love of all people. Amen. We'll have a few moments of silent prayer and then I will lead us into the Lord's Prayer. Today, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
At this time, I invite for you to stand and to greet your neighbors with signs of peace. I invite our ushers to come forward with our morning's offering. May our gifts today go to the work of God's good kingdom. Page 178, Hope of the World.
welcoming a new member this morning. Come on down, Corey. Meredith has been part of St. John for years, and today we're just going to make it official. <laughs> so you're invited to open your hymnals to page 52. We welcome our new member with a reaffirmation of our faith. Remember your baptism and be thankful. The whole, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through the water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Meredith, will you be faithful to participate in the ministries of St. John United Methodist Church with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness? Let us rejoice in this faithfulness of our covenant God. We give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Welcome to St. John. We're excited to make this official. You've got a big year ahead of you. <laughs> Welcome, Meredith. As the service ends, I'll invite for you to stand over there, and a lot of people are going to want to shake your hand today. Okay. <laughs> All right? You may stand for the benediction. Go now in the grace, peace, and love of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.